What's up my pungios, Andy with Andy Vlogs, excited to share with you guys this content here. As the title suggests, we're going to be going over an in-depth comparison of two really powerful, you know, arguably the best in class when it comes to stabilization, three-axis gimbal. We've got the DJI OM5, which was just recently released, as well as Power Vision's S1, very compact three-axis gimbal. Before I get started here, I do want to let you know that this video is sponsored by the folks at Power Vision. They provided to me complimentary and sponsored this video to compare the two different products. Nonetheless, today we're going to be going over a lot of the key hardware differences. We're going to go over the app as well as side by side comparison of the stabilization for both products. With that said, and without wasting any more of your guys' time, let's jump right into it. Let's go ahead and talk about pricing first. The DJI OM5 is priced a little more competitively than the Power Vision S1. The OM5 is priced at $159.99, whereas the S1 is priced at $189.99. There's a couple of key components to that because the Power Vision comes with a number of other different accessories like a wall mount, like a car mount. The OM5 does not, it comes with like a tassel the charging cable like the other one does and then it comes with like a little carrying pouch another key difference here is this has a 4000 milliamp battery that does charge wirelessly and pass through and the om5 does not with that said you've got very very similar grips here for third-party phones they also have you know an additional riser if you have a smaller phone they are complete metal builds and grips very very similarly the tripod mount do fit on a quarter inch mount. The S1 is a little bit longer. It actually does have the extendable selfie stick built right into it as opposed to the OM5. However, the, the OM5 does have the built-in selfie stick built into it, which uh, honestly I think is one of the big issues of this device, which we'll get into. Now, I will give both of the devices here, they both go for a very sleek, very slim ergonomic design. Super compact, but if we're, if we're comparing here, the S1 has it beat. Not only in the width, which is a, probably about 70% of the width, the height, which, you know, is about 80% of the height, the length, if we're, you know, talking about this servo here, and we have the, uh, the elbow extended all the way out. I mean, honestly, there's no comparison here. Looking at the buttons and the arrangement here, very, very similar. Both are very sleek and small. The OM5 has a little bit larger analog stick. Both are very grippy. They still give you, you know, every direction. You've got the zoom on the backside here of the OM5 as opposed to the side on the corner here. Let's talk about Qi charging. I've got the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. We're going to show you how to Qi charge it. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you've got this little pull tag pulled down. That way you can Qi charge. You're going to twist this back over. That way it pulls this thing out from under here. We connect it. It adheres to it. We push it once. You can see the light go on and it beeps and showing you that it's wirelessly charging. Now let's go ahead and uh, break them out and show you the ergonomics. When it comes to the OM5, you have to turn this uh, almost 90 degrees here, this elbow, in order to be able to pull it off of its uh, grip here. It does connect here in the corner and it kind of comes out and that's how it, it turns in place. With the Power Vision S1, it's a four step process where you flip the flap here you take out the hinge by pulling it and having it rotate from the top up there until it clicks. Once you do that, you kind of twist it and close the case here until it's uh, all the way in this position. Then you want to make sure and flip this flap all the way up, which is one of the servos that it connects at this 45 degree angle. The last step is to go 45 degrees on this edge here. That'll put it in the resting position where you've got the power vision facing you just like that. One other feature that the OM5 has is, like I said, the detachable about eight inch selfie stick, which has um, this joint here, which as I said, articulates about maybe 45 to 90 degrees. I'd say 90 degrees. 
depending on the angle that you wish to use. When you connect the uh, additional accessory here for this tripod, you can get that angle, that additional extension for the selfie. That's what this is going to look like. All right, Ponyos, we're here on location here showing you the PowerVision S1 versus the DJI OM5. The grip here, for my sake, is a little bit smaller on the OM5. I don't like that. I want to have something that fits my hand. Uh, I really like the PowerVision S1 grip. Is it, I do feel like I'm in control. I have full control here gripping the whole thing with my hand. Now, before I jump into it, I do have two separate phones for the hardware comparison here. So it's gonna be a little bit different and difficult to be able to one-to-one -one compare the two. Um, I just wanted to mention that limitation here in my comparisons here. All right, I'm gonna be using the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. I do have the case from PowerVision. Uh, the case itself has a built-in stand, which is nice, but this also acts as uh, the piece of hardware that connects uh, magnetically to your device so you can you know shift this back and forth depending on which mode you want it in pulling it away from this charging this magnetized area is for when you charge it if you put put it closer to it that's where the uh, magnetic rail goes there um, inside the case to be able to connect to the PowerVision S1 connecting the PowerVision S1 here uh, you're just going to be matching the circular uh, node there uh, with the little notch there in order for it to connect. Once you get that in place, you're looking good. Resting position looks like this. The OM5 here, you have to have this clamp, which does fit pretty much every phone. This is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Uh, same kind of a thing. You're going to be matching the circular part with the little knob there, the little clip there, and it, it just fastens right to it. The way that you power them on is by pressing the power button twice and holding the second press. You can hear an audible sound from the OM5, from the power vision. It takes a little bit longer, but it puts you in the horizontal vision as, of, as opposed to the vertical. You can switch by pushing the power button twice without holding into the same position. A couple of things here that I want to show you about these two devices that are really cool is you've got the roll locked, meaning that when you turn it like this, it's going to hold it. Viewing angle, it's built in. We're going to switch hands here and show you that the Power Vision does the same thing as well. Center both devices. The roll is locked, putting you in the position that you want to do. So what that means here now is the pan and tilt are both unlocked. So that means that you can tilt it up by kind of just directing the units where you want to put them. They both have about the same motion or range of motion. You obviously have the panning that you can adjust here on both devices. All right, as you can see, they're about the same height with these adapters on there. When we extend the selfie stick, you can see that it is shorter. It's about a foot shorter, as you can see here. The thing is with the uh, power vision, you don't have the ability to change this angle right here. And so when you're trying to tilt it all the way to show your face in the selfie mode, it doesn't quite get you all the way. So you don't necessarily want to extend it all the way in selfie mode, but you do have that option here on the OM5. One problem that I have with the OM5 is that it, it you know, when you're trying to get that right angle, it like, and you see what it's doing? It's just like all over the place. This was like my biggest issue with the, uh, the DJI is like, a lot of people were complaining that this is not how you would typically use it, but this is how I use it. Like when I'm when I'm trying to chase after my kids and they're younger and they're shorter and lower than me, and like having to pan it like this, it always just breaks. That's not the case here with the Power Vision. You're able to keep that um, that positioning that you want. You want to put it in upside down. You still have range of control of panning and tilting. If you want to adjust it slightly, you just go to the stick here and uh, you're able to, you know, follow along with people, flipping it back, and you still have that full control. And I don't have to touch the, uh, um, the device again on the grip until I want to stop it. 
Okay, we're on the OM5 here and I just wanted to show you some of the features here. As you can see, you've got a whole bunch of different features here on the side. You got a whole bunch of customizations here. Uh, you can go into this like uh, story reel here, which is all right. I didn't really want to do anything like that. It takes a series of pictures and videos and then kind of collages them together. You can do uh, this, which is uh, turning on the slim or smooth or auto face stuff. You've got all the resolution FPS you can change uh, up to 4K 60. Um, this is the iPhone, so it's got that ability. You can change this from auto to manual. Then you can do slow motion. You can do this Dyna zoom, which is kind of interesting. Um, if you if you check out my video about the OM5, you can see all of these uh, features uh, in more detail. Uh, nonetheless, it's got a bunch of different features, which are a little bit more than I think that the uh, um, S1 has, but more doesn't necessarily mean better, right? Here on the Power Vision S1 app here, you can see there's a bunch of different settings here on the side here. Very similar to, you know, what we saw in the DJI OM5. You got your home button, you got your uh, hand gesture if you want to, you've got your beautification here. Uh, you've also got um, changing the camera. Here's your resolution, as you can see. Um, you can go into different features, beautification, all that stuff. This is where you can change your resolution and whatnot. Uh, you've got your full or manual mode if you want, and you can go into your gallery. This is where you drag and zoom. Um, but that's about it. And then you press the button and it'll track your face and it's pretty straightforward. A few less than uh, what you have on the DJI. And that was one of the big selling points of the DJI is they had like the Dyna zoom and they had all these extra features on the camera that most people don't really use, but it's just nice to have because I guess for them more is better, which I don't believe more isn't necessarily better. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and show you now the AI tracking. It's pretty impressive. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. So we're recording here now both on the Power Vision and on the DJI. Uh, this is the built-in app, and this is the face tracking. Um, you guys can't see how it's tracking my face, but I will show you just a second how it does. But as I move a, a, across here, it's pretty impressive. I mean, both of them are able to smoothly move over while... The DJI, I feel like, is a little bit, a little bit more janky. Like, the Power Vision is much, much smoother. I'm gonna go down here, and it should be uh, panning and tilting. Let's see what the uh, extent is. It's start, they're gonna start to run into each other. Oh, sorry, DJI. What happened? You lost my face. You lost my face. Oh, huh. Well, there's an issue. Look at that. It can't gr grab back onto my face once it's it's lost. Uh, I don't know why it's not. Huh, that was me doing that. Well, I mean, what can I say? Power vision's awesome. <laughs> there we go, now it's grabbing my face. You see how it kind of like zoomed out and then it grabbed my face? It's kind of weird. But once you, uh, once you get it set, it's pretty good. It can track it pretty well. It'll tilt up and down and pan while tilting up and down and tracking your face so you can see the power vision i feel like it's grabbing your face a little bit better than the uh, om5 the s1 just doesn't do as good a job don't trip me oh om5 oh power vision lost it what happened okay now we're back i'm gonna try to do like a quick now i lost dji Oh, I got it. Let's see how far back I can go and having it track the face. I think we've got it once I cross here. Does it lose it? Oh. Okay, this is our uh, first test here. Um, I'm using obviously both of the devices uh, in tandem with the face tracking. As you can see, as my head moves around, it's tracking it pretty good. Uh, the one problem that I have with the face tracking when you're holding it like this is that it wants to center your head rather than actually put it in the thirds. Uh, so that's the problem. Like if I wanted to have uh, it's it set up where it was uh, faced more like that, it, it tends to center the, the face more than not. Now I'm not comparing the camera quality or the punch in because 
Each device is different. We can go on and on about the differences between the two devices, but I'm mainly focusing on the tracking and uh, the stabilization. Okay, I'm gonna try to get these cameras as close as I can here. Um, the difference between the two is the distance, and so I think it's a little bit more difficult to be able to um, show the side by side, but I'm doing my best here. As you can see, I'm uh, just walking around. I'm panning now, showing you what it looks like with uh, a moderate amount of pan. And they're both be able to, you know, to handle that just fine. Uh, let's get more close up here and get more of, uh, you know, a shot where we're going along the fence. Let's uh, tilt up around the yard and down. Let's do that again. Both of them are pretty. The both of them are, are pretty staggering pretty decent the cameras themselves are able to deal with exposure pretty well and whatnot now we're going to do kind of a, a panning shot here upside down getting closer in trying to get that tilt and pan going here both of them are able to pull for focus and they have a you know they're pretty sensitive when it comes to Trying to pan. Okay, so this is the OM5 trying to get that shot here, like I said. There we go. So I have this very technical shot that I want to get real low and pan around, but I can't get that pan because of the weird angle of the elbow. And then when I wanted to pull it back, see how I'm pulling it like this? It flips. <laughs> I mean, that's a part of the... I mean, that's what it's supposed to, I just can't get it because it, and then it like breaks like that. It breaks like that. Oh, it's frustrating. Okay, doing that same shot here with the power vision. There's no problem. I'm able to pan and tilt and get that shot I want. And then if I wanted to bring it back, There's no problem. See that? I'm able to get that shot. I mean, granted, you're not going to be doing that kind of shot every single time, but having, you know, when you're chasing kids and being changing directions and stuff, you want to make sure that your device is able to keep up with you, and this definitely can. It does a great job here. Okay, we're going to show you now stabilization with the uh, the facial recognition and following showing you what it looks like when i'm running my hands are extended completely out you can see me bobbling but the horizon is more or less being kept well um i think the om5 is having a hard time there okay we're extending the selfie stick as far as we can uh the s1 is a little bit more clunky because of that hinge i'm not able to you know keep it at the right angle but it seems to face track me pretty well i'd say it with that running test the DJI did better because of the hinge. I'm able to angle it like this, as you can see. It's just, you know, better in that regard. On Power Vision S1, and we're gonna follow a day in the life with my Eleanor. Yeah, Eleanor. What? What happened? What? Can we find some leaves? There's some over here. Whoa, there's a bunch over here, Elle. Come on. Now I've got uh, the face lock on her while I'm moving around and pinning. For some reason, the DJI went lock on. But here, you can just toggle it on and off. And use the uh, zoom here. The zoom isn't as good because it kind of like staggers one by one. I'm sure there's a, uh, a software update they can do, but see how it's like super incremental and like robotic as it zooms in? Thing is, is this phone is not updated and optimized for the, the Vision Plus app. What did you find there? Oh my goodness, look at all those rocks! This is the OM5 on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Trying to get a real world 
way of doing it. Come on, Alex, just do your thing. Don't mind, Daddy. Dad. Yeah? You found, you saw the truck? It's super loud, huh? Can Using the zoom here. On the telephoto and tombo loop zoom. Yeah, Big Sue, do you want to welcome me into your home? Eh. Uh-oh, that's in the way. Let's get that out of the way. Goodbye, Sue. Let's run. Ready? Go run and I'll chase you. I'm going to get you out. Go, keep running. Why are you running? I'm not running. I'm running. Woohoo! Well, guys, that about does it here. These are honestly two completely different products. However, they are targeting two very, very similar audiences. Very small form factors, very, very strong products. However, you guys will be the one to determine who won. I honestly think the PowerVision S1 is an incredible competitor in this space. I think it is honestly better than the OM5, but that's my opinion. That's because the OM5 had such a high expectation. With that said, in full disclosure, this product was provided to me and this video was sponsored by the folks at Power Vision, and so you know where that bias is. If you guys wanna know any more information about this product, down below in the links in the description, we'll show you their pricing and availability and some more information about that. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like this video. Let me know down in the comments if uh, this is interests you and if there's another product that you want me to review. Thanks so much for watching guys. As always, my name is Andy with Andy Vlogs. We'll see you on the next one.